Olá, gente, estamos aqui. É, é, primeiro episódio do TV Imprensa do Rock. Nós vamos gravar uma entrevista agora com Oral Dane, é, vocalista do Sanctuary Nevermore, que está aqui no Brasil por um tempo. And Espero que vocês gostem. And, and solo! Of yeah. course, and solo. That's why I'm here in Brazil. That's why. Então vamos começar. Um, you have said that your first contact with music came through opera records that your father laid you, for you to hear. How yes. did you contact with the metal and why did you choose that genre <laughs> to express their voice and your artistic band? Well, I don't know. I mean, my, my father, when I was young, he, he was an opera freak. He, he made me listen to Wagner and um, Puccini and all these old all the classics okay. in opera. And that's really the reason why I took opera training for singing. My father was also a singer. Um, he used to sing in the church choir. Oh. And uh, I had one amazing experience. And it was in Tennessee, in Nashville. And I was searching for a church choir to sing with. And I found this amazing gospel church. And I asked them, can I join the choir? And it was just all black women. And they were amazing singers. Yeah. And uh, they said, can you sing Go Tell It on the Mountain? I'm like, sure, I know that song because my parents forced me go to go to church for so many years. Of course I know that song. And I ended up singing that with an entire black gospel choir. And it was amazing. It was so great. But yeah, my dad inspired me for everything. He was a natural bass. His voice was very, very low. Oh. I'm a baritone. But I can still sing tenor. Yeah. Low tenor. But when I was younger, when I was in my 20s, oh boy, I could, you know, the falsetto was like I was on some kind of satanic helium tank of crack. <laughs> But, yeah. Okay. Uh, Warrior, you are on Brazilian soils, playing with musicians here. Yes. Tell us, how did this project happen and what your goal is with it? Well, it happened... This, this is crazy. Okay. A little bit loca. <laughs> um, but um, a promoter here named Tiago Claro, okay. he contacted me on Facebook and said, w would you like to come to Brazil and do a career <laughs> retrospective live? And I'm like, uh, and he said, I have a band. I'm like, mm, I don't know. I want to see some some videos, audition videos. So I saw them, and I'm like, oh, okay, these guys are good. So yes, I will come and do it. Okay. Now it turns out there's some of my best friends in the whole world. Oh. And we're working right now on my second solo record, and it's going to be original songs plus some cover songs. We're doing a brutally, brutally fucking heavy version of a Cure song called The Hanging Garden. And for me, the way I interpret the lyrics yeah. to that song, it's about someone who's working in a slaughterhouse. And when my father was young, he had a job working in a slaughterhouse. It didn't last long because he told me... Um, When the, the baby pigs, when they were being slaughtered, they sounded like human babies, and he couldn't take it. So he had to stop. And for me, that song, is a, The Hanging Garden, is about someone working in the slaughterhouse. If you listen to the, listen to the lyrics, yeah. it'll, it will make sense to you. Yeah. But yeah, and we're working on you know, a full record of original songs, too. Nice. And they're not like my first solo record. My first solo record, I wanted to do something more rock and roll, but still metal. This one, fuck it. It's fucking full-on brutal metal. <laughs> All right. 
as accomplished singer who you are, the honor of a unique plastic plasticity showing us that in your work with Sanctuary Nevermore and your solo album Phrases to the War Machine, uh, how do you take care of your voice? Well, <coughs> the most important thing for a singer is you have to get a lot of rest, a lot of sleep, you have to drink a lot of water, you have to hydrate yourself, and you, I know I have a bad reputation about alcohol, but you, you kind of have to stay away, so I'm a little, a little better now these days than I was. I know I, know I have a bad reputation for, for drinking too much, but I, I don't do so much anymore. Um, and you just, yeah, you just have to realize your instrument and, and know your limitations and know your strengths. Um, you know, I used to, when I was younger, sing in, in the stratosphere, very high. Um, as you get older, and I will completely admit this, I can't sing that high anymore. So now I focus on my strengths. Okay. And it's no, no secret that I'm a fan of goth music, so I love singing low. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, we can let to ask the consecrated the consecrated bands. You m met with Sanctuary in 2014 and recorded the years the sun died, yeah. which received wide accept acceptance. Can we expect a new album soon yeah. from Sanctuary? Yeah, I, I have three new Sanctuary songs that I'm working on now. Oh, that's nice. So uh, another one's coming. Another one's coming. And it's going to be heavier and faster. Wow. Yeah. This, this, this is what I told the guys in the band. Faster, faster, yes. faster, faster. <laughs> nice. You also made a special participation on the Mehemat in 2007 uh, yes. to record vocals from the song Inner Sanctum. Yes. How was done this invitation, and how was recording with one of the most famous bands of black metal style? Well, I get asked so many times to do guest vocals, and usually they're shitty European power metal bands. When Behemoth asked me to do it, I was like, fuck yes, because they're one of my favorite bands. Mm -hmm. And it was so easy, and I, I think it turned out so good. Um, and uh, yeah, I love their stuff. I love Behemoth. That's why you always see me on stage wearing Behemoth t-shirts. Okay. <laughs> Taking advantage of your warm Brazilian lands, what do you think about the Brazilian metal scene and about your fans from here? Well, of course, I love Crisian, I love Corsus. I did a guest appearance with Corsus at their last show here, and that was great. And um, I'm doing a solo tour soon in Europe, starting in May, and um, Antonio from Corsus, his, his side band, One Arm Away, is going to come on tour with us. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to bring a little bit of Brazil with me everywhere because I love it here. Oh, that's nice. How do you inspire to compose your songs? You know what? I, I I really don't know where the inspiration comes from. Sometimes, like the other day, I was walking back from the Mercado by where I'm staying, and this chorus just went bam into my head. And when I got home, I told Tiago, the guitar player, we got to record this. And I sang the melody for him, and then, then he wrote the, the guitar parts, and it's turning into a really great song. So inspiration comes from different things. I mean, sometimes, you know, I'm watching CNN, and I got to tell you, CNN International is way fucking different than CNN in, in the U.S., CNN in the U.S. is so slanted towards everything U.S. Here, 
CNN International is not. It's, I think it's more like the truth. Um, but, you know, inspiration comes from everywhere. You know, I'll walk down the street and um, see a homeless guy <laughs> sleeping and, you know, take 20 rias and, you know, tuck it into his shoe just because I feel sorry for these people. Um, another new song that I'm working on is called um, If You Can't Run As Fast As The Others. And it's about something when I was in middle school, when I, I think I was maybe 15, 16 years old, something like that. There was um, a boy that was my friend and he developed this disease called multiple sclerosis. Okay. And he started out with crutches, <laughs> walking, and then he had to go to a wheelchair. And all the boys in school were fucking mean to him. Kid, when you're kids, in sc some kids in school can be so cruel, especially... And I was his only friend. And... Yeah. Okay. It's going to be a very powerful song. That's all I can tell you. Uh, what are your musician mus musical influence influences? Do you like any Brazilian brand bands? You just already talked about Yeah, Crazy and Corsus, Corsus Sepultura, of course. Okay. You know, all nice. the standards. <laughs> I just saw the Crazy show. Yeah. Just uh, a few weeks it's ago. It's diabolic, don't you think? Oh my God, they're s <laughs> they're so good live, and their yeah. their new record is really really fucking good. Yeah. But they're a great they're live band. Yeah. We know that you love to cook. Yes. Tell us if you have cooked something that no one liked it. No. No. Of course it's not. It's always nice. I'm a chef. I don't <laughs> cook bad things. <laughs> what do you like most? I like gnocchi gorgonzola. Oh. Yeah, it's gnocchi with uh, gorgonzola cream sauce. Okay. Mm. That's nice. But you can put the same cream sauce on spaghetti. I also like um, um, pasta alla, alla arrabbiata. It's called the angry, angry pasta. Wow. Because it's very spicy with just garlic and red peppers. Um, I also like uh, pasta puttanesca, puttanesca. which is called the prostitute sauce <laughs> and, and and this originated in Italy because there were you know working girls that had to um, to find something that they could make quickly so they could eat between fucking <laughs> okay. and it's it's great it has um, garlic um, kalamata olives uh, capers and it's, it's just it's just great. I'm I, I'm self-confessed pasta holic. Pasta. And look at me how skinny I am. Yeah. I, I can eat I can eat pasta every day. Every day. If you and want never to. gain one pound. Oh. All my girlfriends are like, I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I can eat as much as I want. And That's nice. Yeah. It's called Enjoy it. High metabolism. <laughs> yeah. The last one is for you to leave a message for the Impress of, of Rock to readers, okay? That's our site. <coughs> stay focused, stay metal, never, never de deviate from your true ideals and start your own religion because the ones we have now just don't fucking work. Thank you, Warren. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Mm-hmm. <laughs>